They look so similar, isn't it? Anyways, please pause the video and try them first. Right, let's work this out. This is the integral of the sine of the square root of x. And right here, we have an original sine. And then the second one, this is an inverse sine, right? So I think this one should be easier. However, by looking at this integral, it seems kind of impossible, right? It's kind of impossible in the x world. However, once we take this integral into the u world, we will know what to do over there. So let's begin. I will let u equals to the square root of x, which is the inside function right here. And usually we can just take the derivative right here, right? However, let me square both sides and we will have u square is equal to x. And then I will take the derivative right here. We will have 2u du equals to dx. And you see, when we do it this way, we get the dx right away. Either way, we are ready to take this integral into the u world. We will have the integral, and then this is the sine, and then the square root of x inside is the u, so we have sine of u, and the dx is the 2u du, so let's put that down here. And then, we just have to clean this up a little bit, we can put a 2 in the front of the integral, because that's just a constant multiple, right? And then we have the integral, let's put a u down first, u times sine u, and this is the u. Okay, so we are ready to go, but what should we do? This integral requires integration by parts, and of course, I will show you guys with the most popular method, which is the di method for the integration by parts. And be sure to have the plus minus plus minus on the left hand side like this. This should be enough. If you want to know how to do this, please check out the video in the description. Anyways, I'm going to integrate sine u and then I'm going to differentiate u. So when we differentiate u, we get 1, and then do it again, we get 0, so we can stop. This is the first step when we see 0 in the d column. And now, integrate sine u, we will first have negative cosine u, and then let's do it again, we will have negative sine u. And this is enough for the di method. So let's see, we have the 2 in the front, and let's open a parentheses, and remember, the product of the diagonals along with the sign on the side is the part of the answers already. So the first part of the answer, we will have positive u times negative sine u. So we will have negative u cosine u. And then the second part is negative 1 times negative sine u, right? So we end up with plus sine u. And then if you want to keep going, you get 0 times whatever this is, but then that's just 0 anyways. Alright, at the very end, we take this 2, distribute it, and then plug in u, which is the square root of x, back. So at the end, we will have 2 times that, which is negative 2. u is the square root of x. Cosine u, which is the cosine of square root of x. And then 2 times that, which is plus 2. Sine u is the square root of x. And then we are done. Plus c. This is it for the integral of sine of the square root of u. And now let's look at its cousin, the inverse sine right here instead. Okay, you can still do the same strategy. You can still let u equals to square root of x, but it will take you a few more steps. In this case here, it will be easier if you let u equals to the whole thing right here. Let me show you how to do that. So I will put this down right here. I will let u equals to the inverse sine of the square root of x, like this. But then, I'm not looking at this equation and differentiate that. I want to isolate the x and then differentiate that so I can get dx like, right away like this. So, I'm going to take the original sine on both sides. We will have sine u equals to square root of x. And you see, all I did was just take the original sine on both sides. And then right here, I can square both sides. So we will have parentheses. Let me just write it down this way. It's more clear. Sine u squared, and this is equal to x. And then I will look at this equation and uh, take the derivative. So the derivative is, be sure you take the 2 in the front. We use the power rule first. And the inside stays the same, which is sine u. And then 2 minus 1 is just the first power. So this is what we have at the moment. And be sure you do the chain rule. The derivative of sine u is 
positive cosine u. So we have to multiply by cosine u here. And then this is equal to the derivative x, which is dx. So this is what we have. And now we are once again ready to take this integral into the u world with these ingredients. So we have the integral. And then you see the whole thing right here. Okay, the whole thing right here is the u. So let's put that down right here. And then we have the dx, which is all this. So we will multiply by 2 sine u, cosine u, and then we have the du. So this is what we have, right? Oh my god, this is u times sine u times cosine u, the function part-wise. I know we have the 2 right here. But then, what can we do right here? We have three functions. I don't like that. Let's take a look at this right here. 2 sine u, cosine u. Do we have an identity for that? So we can shorten this right here. Yes. This is the same as saying, let's integrate. u is still the u, but then this part here is sine of 2u. The double angle formula, but if you look at this this way, it's the backwards, right? If you do it this way, you see, it's much easier. You have u and sine of 2u to work with. That's all. And now, once again, we have to do the integration by parts with the di method. I'm going to have the plus, minus, plus. I'm going to differentiate u. I'm going to integrate sine of 2u. Okay, so let's get to work. Do the easier one first. This is 1 and 0. <laughs> and we stop. Okay, integrate sine of 2u. We will have negative cosine. And the inside stays the same, right? But then this time, the derivative of the inside, derivative of 2u is 2. And when we do the integral, we have to divide by the derivative, which is the same as saying multiply by 1 half. And now let's do it again. We will have negative sine, and the inside stays the same. We have to divide it by 2 again, so we will end up with 1 over 4. And now, let's see, we'll take this, multiply with that. That will be the first part of the answer. Plus the u times negative 1 half of cosine 2u. So let's put that down as negative 1 half u. And then we have cosine 2u. And then we take this times that, negative times negative, so we'll end up with plus. And then we have 1 over 4 sine of 2u. And at the end, now what? Well, well, we know u is what? u is the inverse sine of square root of x. At the end, we still have to bring the u right here back to the x. Uh, it's kind of hard, but we can still do it. <laughs> so before we do that, though, this is what we have to do first. We are going to actually break down the double angles right here and also right here. Because the inside here, we will have just sign u if you look at it, right? So you have to really be careful of just have the sign of u, not sign to u. Anyways, this is negative 1 half. u is still u for now. I'm not taking the u back to the x word yet. I'm just going to break down the double angles. Cosine of 2u, I'm going to use this one. This is the same as saying cosine square u minus sine square u. Okay? And then this one we will have plus 1 over 4. Sine of 2u, it's the same as saying 2 sine u, cosine u. All right, and now let's see if there's anything that we can do. We know sine u is equal to square root of x, right? So that takes us this and that. How about cosine u though? A couple ways you can do it. Right here, you see, I can draw a right triangle. When you see sine u is equal to square root of x, I can put that down as square root of x over 1. And then let's draw a right triangle real quick. Put a right angle here. This is the angle u and then sine is the opposite which is square root of x over the hypotenuse which is right here right we have to figure out what's the adjacent side here how can we do that by Pythagorean theorem isn't it you will be the hypotenuse square which is one square which is still one minus this side square square root of x square is just an x and then don't forget you take the square root so by looking at this picture, you know cosine u will be what? 
cosine u will be, let me just write it down here, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is square root of 1 minus x, like this. So this is what we need to use for cosine u. Okay, so we have negative 1 half. u is that. So let's just put that down, right? Because this right here, it's asking for u. So we have the inverse of sine of the square root of x, that's a u. And then I'm just going to open a big parenthesis. Okay, cosine square u. This is cosine u. When you square that, square root goes away. So we have just 1 minus x, isn't it? And then minus sine square u. Okay, sine u is equal to square root of x. Square here, square here, we have just an x, which is this. So we have x right here, okay? And then we have plus 1 over 4 times 2, which is 1 half. This times that's 1 half, right? Sine u is square root of x, and then cosine u is that. So square root of x times square root of 1 minus x. Okay, so this is pretty much it. At the end, you can, of course, clean things up a little bit. For example, erase this a little bit. Anyways, this is negative 1 half inverse sine of square root of x times 1 minus 2x, right? This is minus x, this is a minus x, so minus 2x altogether. So we'll have this for the first part. And then this and that just leave as how it is. Plus 1 half square root of x times square root of 1 minus x. And then we are done. So put plus c. This right here will be the answer. That's it.